when we have all this pressure on us that we're feeling from their mom or about their mom, it bleeds out into our relationship with them. And we respond differently when they mention their mom. And it's not really fair to the kids. And it's not fair to us. Because, I mean, who starts dating somebody and hoping that they're going to be involved with their ex forever? Welcome to Step Struggles. I'm your host, Brooke, and I'll be discussing common issues we face in blended families. All too often, step-parents feel alone while navigating the tough times. My goal is to shine a light on these topics and perhaps provide a fresh perspective to those who are needing one. Let's discuss this week's struggle. Happy Friday! I am getting stressed out because, again, my son, the older one, my four-year-old, has a fever and a sore throat and I'm really hoping that this is very short-lived and that by the time this podcast comes out then it has come and gone and it's over because in a few days I'm supposed to be getting on a plane to fly to BC to visit one of my friends and I've been really looking forward to it and I just hope that um, another illness isn't going to put a wrench in that. We have had the boys, me, just illness since January, and I am so over it. I really think that it's because I kept them in a bubble for 18 months and then sent them to daycare with very little immunity. So again, I just hope that it's short-lived, that it's nothing, that it doesn't turn into anything, and that he's going to be healthy as a horse tomorrow morning when he wakes up. Anyway, um, yeah, I want to thank you all who responded to the poll on Instagram about whether or not I should do a podcast on coaching. It's something that I've been getting a lot of questions about lately, so I thought maybe this wouldn't be a bad idea to kind of put it out there, answer my top three questions that I've been getting, and maybe provide some clarity to those who don't really understand what coaching is and how it could help them and whether or not they'd want to give it a try. So um, again, I do do a free discovery call um, with all of my clients just to see if we are a fit because you want to get along with your coach. You want to be with somebody that you can trust and that you feel comfortable opening up to. And if I'm not that person for you, then I don't want to waste your money or your time either. So yeah, so we do a free discovery call and then we go from there. I am going to be putting out a contest soon about 50% off packages because my stepkids are due to be here in a couple weeks and so my my schedule is going to close up a little bit so I've got a few time slots that I would love to fill and I'm going to again put out that contest soon probably in the next week so look out for that if you are interested and even if you just want to have a little vent session or kind of feel out coaching, then yeah, book a discovery call. It's at the very least an hour for you to get out whatever you want to get out and discuss it. And I'm always happy to to set those up. So just let me know on Instagram or book it on my website. And yeah, I look forward to talking to you. So again, like I said, there's three main questions that I get asked. And the first one is, what is coaching? A lot of people don't really understand what it is. Hopefully I can provide you a bit of clarity. So coaching is more of a partnership. It's I'm here to help you to figure out what answers you have you are looking for and that you want to find. So you'll set a goal to work towards something that you would like to see in your life. And then I just ask you questions until you find out how to get there, what's been stopping you. Nobody knows you as well as you know you. So for me to tell you what to do, it might not work for you the things that work for me. So coaching is meant to help you find the answers that you already have and get rid of the blocks that have been stopping you from achieving your goal. So in the discovery call, we talk about kind of what's been going on, how you would like your life to look, what you need to do to to get there, and we just kind of go from there. So if it's something that I feel that I can help you with, and it's something that you feel you want to work through with me, then we would set up 
a coaching package for us to have conversations and just get you to the place that you're looking to go. Uh, again, I'm not here to tell you what to do. You are going to find all those answers yourself. I'm just here to help you get some clarity and to be able to find a way to move towards your goal and hopefully end up with things looking the way you had hoped that they would look in the beginning. And again, as we work through the conversation and, and the things that have been stopping you from achieving what you want to achieve, it's so often we realize things about ourselves that we would have never realized otherwise. That's what I loved the most about coaching for me was just kind of getting to shift my perspective and see myself in a different way and the way that I saw things changed. And it just, it really did change um, my whole environment. So yeah, that's probably my favorite thing about it is just how it helps us to understand ourselves better and to start viewing things in different ways that help us to live the life that we were wanting to be living. The number two question is, how is it different from therapy or consulting? So again, I'm not here to tell you what to do. I'm not here to diagnose you. This isn't, I'm not here to tell you that something is wrong or what you need to do in order to make something right. I'm just here to help you figure out you and what, you know, what's been getting in your way and how to get to the place you want to get to. And it's all through you just answering questions. So I'm just curious about you. The questions that I ask hopefully help you to think about things that you wouldn't have thought about otherwise and get to, again, like the root of something that's stopping you and or even start thinking about different ways to move forward that will help you to get to where you want to be. So, yeah, there's no couch that you're laying on and, and diving deep into your past or figuring out what... Uh, or me giving you tools to move forward or telling you how to behave in order to accomplish something. Because again, I don't know you like you know you and what works for me may not work for you. So in coaching, it just, I'm here to help you to figure out what will work for you and how, how to get there. Number three, why is coaching a good choice for stepmoms? So I found it so helpful because A, we have the control in coaching the the client is the one who is leading the sessions, who is deciding what they want to do. If you are working towards a goal, in the, it, initially we come up with what you want to work towards in the discovery session, and then a few sessions in, you decide that you you want to change direction, then that's up to you. I'm not holding you to anything. You are in control, and that is something that we often lack as stepmoms, and that can be so stressful. So just knowing that you're the one that gets to decide is huge for stepmoms. And also nobody will know your step family like you do. Nobody understands the situation that you're in better than you. So for me to try and tell you what to do and how to act with so many people involved and so many different personalities that I don't know, it's not as helpful. I, I found anyway, as it is, for you to come up with these answers on your own and to be able to, you know, work with what you have and the situation that you're in. So that's something that I find is helpful in step families. So I'll give you an example. Let's say we were, you wanted to get to a place where you're not thinking about bio mom all the time, or you're not comparing yourself to her. So instead of me saying, just don't think about her or, you know, these are times that you're not allowed to think about her. That's not going to help you because you will think about her still. I will just ask you questions about, you know, when do you find you're thinking about her? What are you thinking? What is it that's so important to you to be able to stop thinking about her? And, and what is it that's making you compare yourself or, you know, whatever your situation is. And then you need to think about these things that you may have not considered before and it might not even be what you originally thought it was it's so often that we go into this thinking one thing and then when we really look at it and really start considering why and and what's going on in our own minds then it turns out to not be exactly what we thought and it can be a much simpler answer than we initially came in came in with so 
yeah, that's that's a big one. And and I haven't found two stepmoms that have come to the exact same realization either. So that's the thing about about our dynamics, right? We're not all the same, although we do have a lot of the same struggles. The dynamic is often slightly different and the way that we are able to get to a good place isn't isn't always the same as anybody else. So just really being able to dive into why we struggle with it, what exactly it is that is making us have these feelings and and how we can work towards not having these feelings anymore is it's huge. It really is. It really can change the way that you see your your family, the way that you show up for your family, the way you interact with the kids. Because even when we have all this pressure on us that we're feeling from their mom or about their mom, it bleeds out into our relationship with them. And we respond differently when they mention their mom. And it's not really fair to the kids. And it's not fair to us because... I mean, who starts dating somebody and hoping that they're going to be involved with their ex forever? Nobody. Nobody wants that. So when the relationship with bio mom isn't great, or we feel like we're being compared to her, or like we need to compare ourselves to her, it adds a whole nother level of stress onto us and and then pressure. So if the kids say anything about her or in any way you perceive them to be comparing you to her, then it it makes you tense. It gives you feelings. They can feel that. And it's just, it's not something that you want to carry. It's not something I wanted to carry. And so just working through that and being able to kind of find some clarity and find a way to reshift the way we see things and, and the way we feel about these situations can really change everything. So that's in a nutshell why I found coaching helpful as a stepmom and why I I wanted to do this because we don't deserve to be carrying around all this weight from a past that we didn't live. So just being able to wrap our brains around how we can protect ourselves and find that joy in our families that And, you know, kind of alter our vision of what our family was going to look like. Because so often we did not grow up thinking that this was something we were going to be involved in. And then the grief of that can be heavy sometimes. And and getting wrapped up in that just only makes you spiral further into, you know, the negative space. So just being able to reframe your mind, restructure you know, your vision of how you thought your family would be and to learn to enjoy your place in your step family and see all the positives that come out of it because they're there. It's just, I mean, if they weren't, you wouldn't be here. So obviously there are things that we need to do within ourselves to kind of let go of some things that have been weighing us down or making us focus on on the negativity instead of all the wonderful things that we should be enjoying. So I hope this helps. I hope this answers some questions. And again, if if you have more questions, then feel free to, to message me on Instagram all the time. And there's also an exclusive community that I am a member of and that I often go into and will soon have Um, kind of a space to answer questions. So I know sometimes stepmoms do want advice and just kind of want to feel like they are seen and understood. And there's so many stepmoms in there that share their experiences and just seeing that other people are going through the same thing as you can really also do great things for your mindset and, and just your overall mood in a day. So I will link that in the show notes as well if you want to look into that further and ask other stepmoms advice in there and maybe just even connect with other people who are going through the same thing as you because, again, it can really, really help to feel like you're not alone. So, I again, I hope this helps and I hope to hear from you guys. And, yeah, thanks again for just listening to me ramble. 
I'll be back next week. Thanks for listening to this episode of Step Struggles. If you are wanting to discuss what you're struggling with, I do offer step family coaching at strugglingstepmom.com. I'm also always open to chat on Instagram at the struggling stepmom. If you'd like to weigh in on our struggle of the week, give me a follow and watch for the question box in my stories. Thanks again and talk to you guys next Friday.